Kevin Herter's been great to start this season, and there are a few things about his game that I wanted to quickly cover here in terms of his playmaking, his movement, how these things blend together, and ultimately how I think he can grow and level up as a player in one specific area. The first part about his game that jumps out is his shooting. He's at 40% over the last couple of years on wide open threes, and this season shooting a career high 43% from downtown. And because he moves around a lot and is active off ball in the Kings offense, he has legitimate gravity. You see two Celtics here just forget about the corner cut because of Herter's movement. And when you have that off ball game and an on ball game, it makes you very dangerous. Here he attacks the closeout, and as he gets deep in the paint, the ideal pass is a little drop off to Harrison Barnes, but instead he kicks it to the corner, and that's still good playmaking offense. And then because he's an off ball threat, he can relocate himself and hit a wide open three. So he can use the threat of his shooting to get into his penetration game as well. Here's a Spain pick and roll. He pops out to the perimeter and he's not even behind the three point line, but Tyler Hero has to worry about that shooting. So he jumps out on him. Herter can then quickly catch and get left. And because he's comfortable putting it on the floor, draws another defender, makes a beautiful jump pass to the cutter for a layup. And he's comfortable dribbling the ball in traffic or against some resistance. He comes off the handoff here, is switched onto by a big, and you can see the stop and start hesitation as he's looking for the right pass. He probably has Sabonis on a really advanced little hook pass over his head for a moment, but waiting for this low defender to commit and then getting deep and finding the corner is a really good option as well. So I like his patience right now off of a live dribble. You can really see it on this play. There are about three, even four Memphis defenders in his area, and he's just comfortable coming to a stop and then using his height at 6'7 to probe and read the court, pretty quickly recognizes the corner is open, and it's another great look for the offense. And you'll even see a little manipulation because he's comfortable handling and hesitating with a live dribble like this. First, the threat of the shot loses the initial defender, a little in and out dribble to get to the middle, and then he looks to the corner, and that's just to freeze defenders so they can't react to the roll pass, and that is absolutely lovely. If it's not obvious, he and Sabonis have this beautiful two-man chemistry. Here's a little handoff deep in the corner, and again, Herter pausing the dribble, hesitating and reading the floor, and by looking into the corner, he holds this defender for just a beat, and that's enough to find some bonus again for a huge dunk. Mike also has a quick thought about Mike Brown's playbook and how it relates back to Herder's playmaking. One of the things that we didn't touch on as much in the main channel video with the Kings offense is the concept of step-up screens and how they can use those within their sort of offensive flow. You'll see players often actually just use this screen. Like Chris Paul here, taking the screen and then skipping it over to Cam Johnson. The Kings get into this with a little pitch sequence. Fox pitches it to Malik Monk, and then Monk pitches it to Harrison Barnes. Then Barnes reverses the ball back to Fox as Chemezi Metu goes up and sprints to set this screen. This is an interesting example because Fox actually reverses the ball back to Harrison Barnes who is able to attack a size mismatch against Corey Joseph and get to the rim. The Kings actually just have a lot of options to attack out of these step up actions that don't involve just using the ball screen. So instead of reversing it back to the ball handler up top, you can actually just go directly to the screener or big man who's coming up to the top of the paint. This allows the big to directly flow into a little handoff action with the guard, Fox in this case, getting ahead of steam running downhill and able to do a nice little wide receiver move and pivot into a three-point shot. I really like putting Kevin Herter in these situations. I feel like his height sort of gives him a unique advantage on this play. So he takes the step up screen and as he comes downhill and leaves his feet, he's able to maneuver the ball away from Looney and Clay with that height which then opens up a layup opportunity for Sabonis on the roll. I'm basically a fan of just involving Herter as much as possible in the offense. I actually think he can increase his volume as a scorer. Like on this backdoor cut, 
I like his willingness to throw this really tight window that could result in a turnover, but it's sort of a high leverage pass that eventually gets a layup for them. Because I believe Herter has a strong feel for the game, I think if he were given more opportunities within the offense to make decisions, that would eventually yield good results for the Kings because the process with which he makes these decisions is generally really strong. And you can see this decision making in simple actions as well. So here he up fakes the three and then just plays some more handoff game with Sabonis. And as he comes off the curl, he can shoot this, but reads the nail defender as moving toward him. And something as basic as hitting that quickly and reading the cutter opens up another wide open three for a teammate. He's also particularly strong as an extra passer, meaning he's reading what's happening in advance. And as Sabonis comes down the lane and collapses the defense, he knows who's open as he's catching the ball, quickly whips it back to Barnes, and then Barnes can continue the advantage and get all the way to the basket to finish. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes he's too eager to pass in these spots. So on this one, he's spotting up in the corner. And as the defense is set into rotation, He's wide open on the catch, but wants to touch pass it to a teammate above the break. And not only is Herter a much better shooter than Davion Mitchell, but he's in the corner where he's shooting 44% in the last three seasons. And to me, he should be looking to shoot this immediately, not pass it to a weaker teammate. And this passivity is something that jumps out given how good Kevin is as a shooter. Look at all that space he has to fire on the catch and this should be going up to me, and instead he waits for the defender to get to him and dribbles into something else. Here's another example off a handoff where I can see him shooting with this much space against the big, but it's a little tight, so he gives it up to Sabonis. But then when he gets it back, Looney is way behind the play, and this is another opportunity where he could be taking a three, instead kind of walks into the same shot from two because he's just not conditioned to shoot with this kind of aggression yet, and I think he's good enough that it warrants it. Here's another example where a defender is going under the screen on the handoff, and he'll shoot this sometimes, but that's a clear walk into the shooting pocket to me, and he's passing that up, even though the defender is seven or eight feet away, turns it into one of those nice live dribble passes anyway, and it's good offense for the Kings. But we have seen these glimpses of aggression from him before, and I think it's only a matter of time for him to adjust and realize that he should actually be shooting even more threes, and that's going to open up up more of his offense. And the thing about this that's so exciting is he already has the tools to do this. He can get into threes moving to his left, and he can get into the exact same shots comfortably, flying into it from his right and turning and squaring against defense. So it's really just a matter of him getting comfortable pulling the trigger more quickly in these situations. So Herter's a really interesting player right now to me in that he's already a good movement shooter with live dribble playmaking. He can get into the paint and finish a little bit, but there's this clear room for him to level up as an overall offensive weapon just by getting more comfortable taking more and more of these kinds of shots.